Hello and welcome to My Arabian World's coverage of the Expo 2020 Dubai, a once-in-a-lifetime celebration and the greatest showcase of human brilliance and achievement. Staged under the theme Connecting Minds Creating the Future, Expo is divided into districts and zones that reflect the event's subthemes: opportunity, mobility, and sustainability. Kuwait has risen with flair and ambition to the occasion of the first World Expo to be held in the Arab world. Although Kuwait has participated in five Expo events in the past, their participation has never been of this magnitude. The thing is, the success of Expo 2020 will not only be a success for the UAE, but for Kuwait, the other Gulf countries, as well as the Arab world. The Kuwait Pavilion is situated at a three-way junction, close to the most prominent landmark at Expo 2020 Dubai, the Al Wasal Dome taking up an area of 4,546 square meters within the Sustainability District, with the main theme being New Kuwait, New Opportunities for Sustainability. The unique golden structure of the pavilion is supposed to mimic the Kuwaiti sand dunes in texture, shape and color, complete with screens displaying the familiar image of camels loping across sand dunes. Echoing its sustainability theme, the building has been designed in a modular manner making it easy to dismantle and recycle the construction materials when the six-month World Fair concludes. Inside the pavilion, a cross-section view of the country's focus on sustainability, as well as its history, tradition, contemporary growth and prosperity awaits us. As a nod to Kuwait's history of urban development, a funnel modeled after the country's iconic water towers to store desalinated water in case of emergency begins at the center of the pavilion and stretches upwards through all levels of the pavilion. This Kuwaiti symbol of sustainability and water security calls for the region to protect and preserve its scarce resources while reflecting Kuwait's utmost respect for the natural environment, the local climate, resources and the extensive skills of its people. At the pavilion's courtyard, we are then greeted with a large curved screen on which a 6K film, Safe Haven, immerses us in Kuwaiti's heritage, reveals the kingdom's present, and offers us a glimpse into its future, in line with the Kuwait Vision 2035, also known as New Kuwait. Their vision aims to transform the country into a financial and trade hub, regionally and internationally, thereby attracting investors. This national development plan is linked to international goals and factors by adapting them to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 2030 Agenda as well. The short film you see on the screen about the country's past, present and future is told from the perspective of an 8-year-old girl, promoting the role of future generations of women as part of Kuwait's commitment to social progress. After the short film, we make our way up a ramp which replicates the experience of crossing the Sheikh Jaber Causeway in Kuwait, offering a breathtaking panoramic view of present-day Kuwait City. Officially inaugurated in 2019, the causeway is considered the fourth longest sea bridge in the world, 
with a length of 50 kilometers, linking Kuwait City to the future Silk City. From the present, we now shift to the country's past in the next section of our tour. Kuwait's history dates back about 7,000 years and over this period of time remained a cultural and civilizational meeting place. Kuwait played the role of a hub between the countries of the East and the West, as well as a crossroad between the culture of the desert and the culture of the sea. On the wall we see a comprehensive timeline of the history of their land. Kuwait has artifacts and relics that date back to the Neolithic era, where people practiced sailing and diving in search of pearls 5,750 years before Christ. Hellenistic discoveries were found on the island of Philaka, where Alexander the Great's fleet settled and built a fortress for protection. 1718 was the beginning of Al Sabah reign and founding of Kuwait. In 1961, the state of Kuwait announced its independence. Painstakingly recreated relics and ancient artifacts are displayed in these glass boxes representing the different parts of the timeline we just talked about. This next section of our tour calls attention to Kuwait's genuine desire to diversify away from oil and move on to other more sustainable sources of energy. Right here, the pavilion offers a snapshot of a nation ready and willing to embrace change in the present as well as the future. The motion detection screens showcase the seven pillars of New Kuwait, each represented by a logo that will appear lit up on the top when a visitor submits their choice. The seven pillars are efficient government administration diversified and sustainable economy, quality infrastructure, sustainable living environment, high quality healthcare, creative human capital, and distinguished international status. On our left, we can see a timeline of the discovery of oil in Kuwait back in 1913. Historically, Kuwait's economy has relied on the seas and until the discovery of oil, diving and trading were the country's predominant sources of income. The transition to oil was a major turning point for the country and significantly impacted people's lives. Gradually, oil became the primary and most lucrative source of income for Kuwait. Now we have to actually walk through the symbolic Kuwaiti's water tower to get to the next part of the exhibition. As we walk through this fennel, we are reminded of the importance of water, the source of life. This next section clearly showcases Kuwait's wildlife and what you may encounter in their desert environment. Some of the animals that are able to survive in the wild are eagles, monitor lizards, Arabian red foxes, snakes, hares, owls, among others. The Kuwait Pavilion is raising awareness in visitors to help preserve the environment and stop the extinction of animals like the desert hyenas. They encourage us to educate our children to take care of our natural environment and their ecosystem. According to the World Database on Protected Areas, in Kuwait there are three marine parks, one national park, 14 nature reserves, one scientific reserve, one wildlife reserve, two parks, and four other protected areas. This section invites us to explore Kuwait's nature, wildlife, and biodiversity by placing our hands under the beam of light to reveal one of the many plants, desert animals, and bird species found in Kuwait.
Right after, we enter the media and entertainment section of the exhibition, highlighting the richness of Kuwait's culture through TV shows, movies, plays, comedies, musicals, and theater. This section of our tour highlights Kuwait's National Assembly, where the democratic practice takes place. The Kuwaiti constitution was written in 1961 and is theoretically based on the modern civil state democratic principles and combines aspects of both presidential and parliamentary systems. In 2005, an amendment was made allowing women to vote and run for parliament. This screen depicts women empowerment and highlights their importance today in Kuwait society. They have women ministers, ambassadors, judges, and now joining the military. Kuwaiti women are truly included in all sectors of their society. The table you see here is an interactive data bank which includes different entities in Kuwait. Each of these chess-like pieces with different icons can be moved around the table for visitors to learn more about aspects of Kuwait's progress in sciences, environment, economy, and industry. As we approach this black wall with white holes of different sizes, we realize they actually hold miniature displays in them. Some represent life in Kuwait, while others are models of popular buildings and infrastructure. This next sector looks straight out of a sci-fi movie with these bright pillars. The Kuwaiti pavilion can get really loud and noisy, so these pillars invite you to come closer and put your ear against it to clearly hear the sounds of traditional instruments and enjoy. The final exhibit area of the Kuwait Pavilion puts on display the country's humanitarian efforts to help visitors understand what the country has done to help other regions achieve sustainability. This zone highlights Kuwait's connection to the world, extending its hand from a deep belief in humanity and transcending its geographical size with its great act of giving. The Kuwait Fund for Development provides long-term loans at low interest rates to countries in need and can be used to help build schools, hospitals, roads, and infrastructure in order to help the countries achieve sustainability. The state of Kuwait, in coordination with the United Nations, organized several international donor conferences with the aim of helping countries in need and assisting their reconstruction efforts by collecting generous donations for them. Visitors have the choice to end their tour here and exit the pavilion, or if they're up for it, they can go check out the rooftop. The rooftop terrace has a coffee shop, a stage to hold events and musical concerts, and most of all, a beautiful view of the Expo Dubai site. The structure that you see here is an amazing accomplishment, a huge success for the UAE. They've done an amazing job accommodating and creating a friendly environment for all visitors. God bless the United Arab Emirates. 
We hope our tour of the Kuwaiti Pavilion offered you a more critical understanding of where Kuwait stands today and perhaps, more importantly, where it plans to be in the future. And you know the drill, like this video and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Until next time!